Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm bringing you another top five video. This one is the second annual top five characters I would like to see become heroes in Overwatch. This is the 2019 edition. If you want to check out last year's video, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a great video, but if you want to check it out, I will link to it in the description and in the cards uh, for you if you want to see it. But you can see how far things have come over the past year. Before I jump into the list, I want to say a couple of things about this list and the criteria for what constitutes a character making this list. Number one, the character has to officially be a part of the Overwatch lore. And in order for that to happen, they have to have been introduced in some form of official Overwatch content. This means any voice interaction, any comic, any uh, animated short, anything that is officially Overwatch related and officially released by the Overwatch team as a part of the Overwatch story uh, means that they are considered for this list. Any character such as Mama Hong or Jetpack Cat who were considered in the early stages of Overwatch de Overwatch's development but have never made an appearance in any official lore are not uh, considerable for this list. The second thing is that the character also can't be confirmed to be in development as a hero. So that means no Echo, and that means no Sojourn, as uh, Jeff Kaplan has confirmed that both of them are in development as heroes, and we should be seeing them here in the next year and a half or so. So with those out of the way, those are the two major criteria that determines whether or not a character can or can't be a hero uh, on this list of possible heroes. Let's jump into the first thing, which is a couple of honorable mentions. And there's a lot of characters in Overwatch's lore. There, it was hard for me to even pick five uh, that I really thought were the best five. Uh, but I do have a couple of honorable mentions. The first one I want to mention is Dr. Chow. Now, Dr. Chow is someone who, up until the Storm Rising event, we knew nothing about uh, the name Dr. Chow. But we do know that Dr. Chow is the head of Lu Chang Interstellar. Uh, and we know that Dr. Chow is the person who uh, owns the wheelchair that has been found on Li Zhang Tower. That is Dr. Chow. That is what we know about Dr. Chow. Uh, we don't know much about Dr. Chow beyond that. We don't know if Dr. Chow's a male, Dr. Chow's a female. We don't know what Dr. Chow has done or how Dr. Chow has any connection to Overwatch, but we do know that Dr. Chow is mentioned in an interaction uh, between Sojourn and the strike team in Storm Rising. The other honorable mention is Emre Sarioglu uh, or Kamiko or Marembe or any of these other Overwatch members that have been mentioned in some form in the story. There's a bunch of people in the Overwatch organization. Any of them could realistically be a hero. There are bound to be characters we don't know about yet. I don't want to spend a whole video uh, or an entire point in this just mentioning characters who have been shown in some capacity somewhere uh, who could potentially be an Overwatch hero in the future. There's always an option for these characters to show up at some point later on. Uh, I would rather focus on, hey, we know about these characters or we don't know about these characters. Let's focus on what we do uh, know could be coming here very soon. Um, and let's focus on some of the more named characters or characters who have had a little bit more impact on the Overwatch story instead of the ones that are mentioned once or twice in little throwaway lines here and there uh, as just Overwatch agents. With those out of the way, however, let's move on to number five on this list. At number five, I have the Junker Queen. Now, last year, if you remember my list from last year, I had Junker Queen at number one. So that brings up a question. How come Junker Queen went from number one to number five? And there's a couple of reasons for that drop. The first one is that we got Wrecking Ball last year. Now, I had no idea that Wrecking Ball would be Hammond, the hamster from... Uh, Horizon Lunar Colony, and that Wrecking Ball would have ties to 
Junker Town. Now we knew about Junker, or we knew about Wrecking Ball, the champion who had been incredibly successful in the Junker Town pits, but we didn't know that Wrecking Ball was Hammond. Uh, now that we know that, it seems uh, to me, uh, and I would not really care as much um, about getting another Junker Town related hero right now. I think that we should get another Junker Town related hero, and I think it should be the Junker Queen, but I don't think we need her right away. The other reason why uh, I have her down this low is because it's very, very, very likely that she is going to be a hero. Jeff Kaplan didn't confirm that she would be a hero, but said that they have big plans for her a little bit further down the road uh, and didn't go too much deeper into it than that. But that, to me, screams she will be a hero, uh, so it's only a matter of time before we get her officially, based on what I have heard. So that's the two reasons why I have her this low, but it's not confirmed, so I put her on this list. The thing that I think is most interesting about uh, the Junker Queen is what type of hero could she be? She could be a DPS hero that uses her melee weapons as her primary weapon. Maybe she has a, a sidearm as well. Or she could be a tank in her mech that she used in Junker Town. Maybe she's a DPS hero with a mech. We don't know. I'm really excited to see what we could get for Junker Queen. We already know what she looks like. We already have a voice actress for her. So there's already a lot of stuff the, there for the Junker Queen. So I'm excited to see a potential future for the Junker Queen as a hero in Overwatch. At number four, I have Sanjay Corporal. Now, Sanjay Corporal, of course, is the uh, member of the Vishkar Corporation who Symmetra talks to in the A Better World comic about uh, helping out in Rio de Janeiro, who seemingly does some sketchy stuff. Uh, and we also know that he is a member of Talon's Inner Council. Now, we don't really know if Sanjay Corporal is someone who would actually actively fight in any capacity, but we know that we could have another hero who uses hard light, much like we see with Symmetra. Sanjay Corporal was also on my list last year, I believe coming in at either three or four, so not too much of a difference, if any difference at all, for Sanjay this year. Um, I would love to get another Talon hero, um, but Sanjay is not my number one choice for a potential talent hero. And I think that Sanjay, there's no guarantee that he would ever have any reason to fight. We've seen plenty of characters introduced in comics who have no, um, fighting bone in their body. And Sanjay could be the same way, but who knows? Uh, I could see him either being a DPS hero or a tank, um, if he had, say, some kind of mech that was made out of hard light. Um, and also, I guess, potentially he could be a support, but I don't really believe he would be. If anything, I think he would be a member of the damage category. And overall, I lean towards Sanjay being a potential future hero, but there's some who I think have a little bit more of a chance of appearing as a hero than Sanjay does, but I wouldn't mind getting him as another member of Talon, because Talon's representation in Overwatch is a little small right now, and I think uh, we could all use a little bit more Talon in the game. At number three, I have the unnamed Omnic who appeared at the end of Storm Rising. Now, we don't know anything about this Omnic other than the fact that Doomfist spoke with this Omnic about working with Talon, and he seemed interested in doing it. That's all we know. We know nothing more, but there are tons of rumors and fan theories as to what this Omnic is and his affiliations. Uh, based on his color scheme, he has a purple jaw. There are some people who believe that he is a leader, or at least a member, of Null Sector, the group that we saw in King's Row in the Overwatch Uprising event. Now, we don't know uh, 100% whether or not that's true, but it's an interesting theory. We also know that he is one of the last people that Doomfist met with before he was captured by Overwatch in Singapore. 
uh, which is the arrest that we see in the Doomfist reveal trailer or the Doomfist character origin story video. Um, so there are a couple things that tie this character very heavily to Talon and potentially Null Sector, of course. We see he uh, mentions the fact that he's fighting for Omnix and is very, very potentially involved with Talon as well. He's a very big-looking Omnic. He could very well be a tank or just a big DPS hero. I don't expect him to be a support in any capacity. But we will see what happens with him in the future. I really like his design. Uh, I get a really strong feeling that he was shown off at the end of Storm Rising for a reason because it's very likely that he is going to be a hero coming soon. Whether or not he's the next hero or the hero after that, we have yet to see, but I am a very, very big fan of this Omnic. I think we could always use more Omnic heroes. I think he, in particular, is a very cool-looking Omnic, and I'm excited to see his future as a potential playable hero in the game. At number two on this list, I have another Mecha pilot. Now, there's two in particular that I would rather see than the others, but... Let's just in general talk about Mecha as an organization and the other members that are in it. We know D.Va is in it, and we also see the mechanic Daehyun in the Shooting Star animated short. On the Busan map, we hear the voice of Captain Myung, who is the overall leader of Mecha. But Captain Myung and Daehyun do not use Mechas, uh, or Mech suits in general, uh, in the team, at least as far as we know. The other members of Mecha besides D.Va who do uh, have Mecha suits are Casino, Demon, King, and Overlord. Casino and Overlord are the two that have the least information on them. They are members of the team, but they have stories, but not as, mu uh, as much as some of the others. Casino uh, was a former F1 race car driver. Um... And he has helped defend Busan uh, with the other groups of Mecha. Uh, that, that's about all we know. Uh, his mech is named La Princesse Sarine, and it is the green and black one. Uh, as you can see here, that is his mecha. So, not a lot there. Could work as a hero, but not my personal best choice for a hero. We also have Overlord, who also I don't feel is the best choice for the next hero. Uh, he has even less information about him. All we know is that he's the youngest member of D.Va's squad. And that uh, during the attack, we see him get injured and helped out by Demon. Uh, his mech is named Mastermind, uh, and it is uh, blue and it more closely resembles uh, a VTOL aircraft um, instead of a mech. So, Overlord, not my top choice, um, but who knows? I think any of them would work. But my personal favorites for potential next heroes are Demon and King. We'll start with Demon. Demon, or Yuna Lee, uh, is someone who was on the same esports team as D.Va, and they were both then brought into Mecha. So that means that the two of them have history, uh, and they have a past relationship in some capacity. As friends, maybe as teammates that didn't quite get along, we don't quite know yet, but we do know that she was on the same esports team as D.Va. Her mech is named Beast, and it is a large red uh, mech, and it has a green energy shield projector built into its right arm. It has a big hammer type thing. Uh, it's a really, really, really potentially awesome looking mech uh, that I believe also has uh, some kind of weaponry on it as well that isn't just like some hammer. It's one of the ones that I think looks more likely to actually be something that could make it into the game. Interestingly enough, I think it is also the one that could potentially be a main tank uh, as opposed to an off tank like what we see with D.Va. But the other potential option is King. Who King 
is the former esports rival of Diva, but is now on her mecha squad. Uh, his mecha is named Singijun, which is uh, a type of Korean fire arrow rocket. Uh, and his is yellow, and his has a more humanoid configuration, as you can see here. This is a very, very, very nice potential hero here as well. I think either Demon or King would work best as a potential hero from Mecha. I think another tank would be cool. I think another Mecha tank would be cool. I know we did just get a Mech technically with Wrecking Ball as our last tank hero, but this one could work a little bit differently, a little bit more offensive on the King side, a little bit more tanky on the Demon side. We know Demon is very protective of her teammates. That works very well for a main tank. I would love to see one of these two uh, in particular become a hero, but only time will tell if we'll get to see either of them or any of the members of Mecha as a hero in the future. Finally, at number one, I have Liao. Liao was also on my list last year, but Liao came in at number two. And I was pretty positive that over the course of the past year, we would have gotten Liao as a hero, which is why I only had Liao at two. I thought Liao had a much higher chance at becoming a hero than the Junker Queen. Uh, I thought the Junker Queen was a little bit potentially off, uh, and we hadn't really seen much from the Junker Queen until we got Wrecking Ball. But Liao, we've seen almost nothing from Liao ever. Liao was mentioned once, in a post from 2016, a fake news post, a news article from within the Overwatch universe by Olympia Shaw, and it talks about the Overwatch team. And in it, there's one line that talks about Liao. And what it says is, the United Nations covertly brought a few of these unique minds together to form a small, nimble team aimed at striking significant blows against Omnic strongholds. Their names... Morrison, Reyes, Amari, Liao, Wilhelm, and Lindholm have since become legendary. The world would come to know them as the founders of Overwatch. But we don't know anything about Liao. How legendary can Liao be if we don't know anything about the person? We don't know if Liao is male or female. We have never seen what Liao looks like. Even in the picture included, you can see... Uh, Soldier 76, you can see Reinhardt, you can see Reaper, you can see Torbjorn, you can see Anna, but no Liao. Is Liao just the brains behind the operation? Never fought, just involved in speaking to them and saying, hey, you got this, you're going to do this, you're going to help with that, here's what you're going to do. We don't know anything about Liao. We just know that Liao is one of the six founding members of Overwatch, and that is it. And that is really exciting to me because that means that Liao can be whatever the team wants Liao to be. Maybe Liao is actually Sojourn, someone who we know has a long history with Overwatch and that we've seen countless times in different media uh, as the strike captain of Overwatch. But maybe Liao is someone else. We don't know. Even if Liao doesn't become a playable hero, I just want to know about Liao. Who are they? What did they do? What was their importance to the organization? What role did they play in its creation? That's all I want to know. And are they a male or a female? I don't want to just refer to Liao as them, they, um, and just not understand anything about Liao. Un because it feels like Liao is this important character that we know nothing about. And I want to face and I want to know what Liao looks like. So, please, 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 Overwatch team, let us get Liao as a hero. Or at least just let us know who Liao is and why they were important to the foundation of Overwatch. That concludes my list of the top five characters from the Overwatch story that I would like to see become heroes in the future. This, of course, the 2019 edition. And if you have any thoughts of your own, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. If you would like to see any of the characters I mentioned or any other characters, I would love to hear it down in the comments section. But that is all for me here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing as it helps out a bunch with the channel. But I'm out of here. 
once again, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.